Hello, it's Laura G. It's been way too long. Uh, I am sorry for not posting a week half after my trip to Florida. I said I would do that to show you any gains. Um, I won't be able to show you anything in this video, but I hope to do another video shortly that will do that. Um. The reason I did it was first I wanted to wait two weeks after we got back just so you guys would be <laughs> would know that I didn't have the virus. Um, well, it's been five weeks since I got back, so we're okay for now. Um, so first I'll talk about of the whole coronavirus and such. There were some people who felt like I should not go to Florida for the treatment. Um, and that includes my own family members. So it wasn't just online. That was other people too. Uh, and I understand that. Uh, we gotta look at it in context though. The week before I left, my kids went to school. The week before I left, uh, by and large, we were referring to everything as an epidemic, not a pandemic. So a lot of things changed as I left. Um, and even so, you might say, still we should have gone. And I understand that perspective. Um, for me, it comes down to different perspectives or relative risk. Uh, some people live, like to live their lives with very little risk. I and my family are not some of those people. Hence, I've done things like train horses. Not very well, mind you, but I work with horses, I've ridden, I've ridden bicycles over small elevated bridges, which is dangerous. I hurt myself doing it. I've ridden off road motorcycles and raced them. I've gone on extended sailing trips where we included a storm at sea for three days. So my life choices include very high risk activities. I totally understand not every family would include in their lifestyle choices. But where I draw the line is a little different than some other people. Um, if there were a rule or a law that's traveled, that would be a different matter. But, when it comes to the yearly flu, or even coronavirus, my goal was not to avoid contracting the disease. That does mean that I have a higher risk of dying, dying from uh, complications of the flu, or from dying from coronavirus. And I understand that, and that I have chosen to go that route. My goal is not to avoid getting it. My goal is to survive as well as I can when I get it. I have had the flu since my diagnosis. And I fully expect I will eventually get the coronavirus. I hope that I come to it okay. But I just want to let you know where I stand on these things so you're not surprised by my, my choices. Also, there were some people mentioning that the treatment down there in Florida is snake oil. Um, I think that was intended to imply that there is 
little evidence to back up its success? Because that is true, there isn't a whole lot of it. But there has been one confirmed reversal using that method, and that's not anything to sneeze at. Um, makes you kind of wonder what's in that snake oil. Because if you can try it, you know? Okay, so, what was my experience like? Um, the clinic itself is a small building. There is a scientist, two doctors, a staff of nurses, Either a psychologist or psychiatrist, I forget. And um, other support staff. And they make up a team. They work with while you're there. The first day for us was just talking with the scientist about what this treatment would look like. Or what we wanted to focus on. Um, the atmosphere of the office is a little more, uh, I would say, Caribbean, uh, Caribbean timing, um, which means a little bit not so uh, focused on being precise. Like many doctors were you there a half hour early. They weren't necessarily like that. A little more laid back as a touch. Time. When I went out there, I was under the impression that I would be able to continue on all the herbs I was taking. Um, but when I arrived there, I discovered that they would be off of everything. Mm -hmm. The only things that they would be still on was that I could stay on with probiotics and my life therapy. So all my supplements. Um, that was a little nerve-wracking for me because I felt like all those things were helping me. But I have decided that I would let their, uh, their philosophy uh, supersede my thoughts for now to see what will happen. It's not been an easy decision. So the second day, we had some blood, blood draws and an IV with vitamin C and then the, we also had the B vitamins and um, I believe that first day they also tried Magnesium, I can see. Because there was one other vessel, I forget what. But that, the magnesium was in really big because there's no doubt, so we stopped that. Got my dick gap injections that first day. Because that was my spine, either side. Got most like is a small, a small needle. Hmm? that goes into your skin. I don't know, maybe... I don't know. I don't know the distance it goes into your skin. Get into the muscle. And the attraction doesn't hurt too bad. Like a pit prick. Cause if they push the cat, like glutamine, halidine, no, it was organic shoes, I forget, sorry. Okay, quite a teen. 
it's his whistle. And at first, you feel pressure from the fluid. And then your muscle, if it is a useful muscle that has, has use, and it will start to contract. It feels like a trolley horse, so it's not very pleasant. I found it helpful to have so press on it hard. But even so, every time you do injections, which I did with your back, maybe, I don't know, 20 injections? Maybe more? Maybe less. Oh, I felt I had to kind of use uh, calming techniques, but mentally just uh, separating myself or thinking through other, other things, distracting, singing to myself. Because it was painful. Um, over the course of being there, I also did. It is the IV. That was for half a day. I only did half the dose. Um, it would start making my blood pressure go up. So we had to keep it pretty, pretty slow. I had to recline a lot to lay down. We also did. Um, glutathione pushes, not where they put some glutathione into your IV. But it's, while you're there and they're doing everything, you have a saving block. I have my lock on so that they can access, put stuff with you while you're there every day. So, Every day you get a poke in your arm, and a bunch of pokes wherever they, they're treating your muscle. So it's not a very pleasant experience. Because they try to make that better by having a great environment, a very supportive, very encouraging. But still, it's quite challenging. Um, the whole philosophy is that ALS is based on inflammation and they're focused on reducing the inflammation. inflammation. Um, the glutathione is part of that master antioxidant allowing things to go in. Get out of your cells properly. But it is the get supportive to your cells. Basically, giving your cells energy to do what they need to do. The back injections are to, re to provide food. food. Food for your muscles so that you can uh, grow your muscles. And then the C and the B vitamins and other minerals are just for general body support because the processes can go as they ought to. There is some folks who are trying to figure out what uh, might have caused the inflammation to start with such as toxins or infections. So, uh, when I went home, my maintenance, um, ideally they would be on two different peptides and Back injections and glutathione cream, cream lotion and vitamin D drops. And they also sent a few uh, 
Because it's either wheelchairs, that's more vets, it's either hotel, it's either food, it's either caregiver, it's either medical equipment, it's an expensive disease. But I would like to see what cumulative effects the neck has and what other effects I can see from the treatment, whether it's from the glutathione or the peptides. So that's about it, my review. So if anyone else is thinking of going there, you could have kind of an idea of what my experience was like. The staff is very, very supportive. Very encouraging, definitely bilingual. It was a very international environment. People from all over the world come Latvia, Canada, Argentina, Brazil, the U.S. But that's just when I was there. So, how things meant for me while well, we're adjusting to uh, life with the virus effects. Um, so, not going out as much, not seeing as many people, but seeing our family a lot more. I've had to be, uh, I've learned that I'm not as careful with my words and as attitude when I'm confronting people, and I should be. Sometimes, it's easy to get careless with your own family because the people you love the most. Um, so I've definitely seen that room to grow with how I love my family and how we navigate conflicts. So many opportunities for growth. I've had some fantastic conversations conversations with my father, father about uh, theology of religion. I've really been enjoying watching the atheist to Sam, Sam Harris. I find it very useful to hear his heartfelt objections to Christianity. I can ponder, ponder my own responses and make sure I'm living an examined life. I owe a huge debt to all the people who helped us during my trip. My family, my father, my mother, my in-laws for taking care of the kids, my friends, my little brothers taking care of the kids, my church family for their prayers and support, my, my brother's family, my sister-in-law for helping take care of me, my friend Johanna for her help caring for me. My husband. It took quite a group of people. That was a very, very long update. So thanks for watching. I'm not able to use my phone without help. So I'm not able to look at any of your comments. But you feel free to comment anyway. Okay, I'm welcome.